Okay, guys, welcome back. I'm gonna do a cloudy type of waterfall pour, but only black and white today. But before we get started, I'll show you a painting that I did about a week ago, I think it was, maybe a bit longer. I don't know if I've shown you this dried result, actually. This one here, dried beautifully as usual. This is my glue and water mix. Lovely, lovely. I'm going to show you some of these cells up here. Look at those gorgeous cells. Oops, I don't know whether I'm focused. There we go. Look at that. This was uh, browns and blues. Really pretty. Turned out really nice. There's one little caterpillar thingy there, but he's not too bad, is he? Oops, I think that's all of it. <laughs> Trying to get it all in. There we go. So that's it. Lovely. And we'll focus again. Must remember to do that each time. Hey. All right. So that was that guy. Uh, I'll show you another dried one on the next video. Uh, so this one, I did this ages ago. I don't know whether you remember seeing that video. So this was just Artist Loft Black and White with Floetrol. It had a little bit of gold here. The gold kind of got lost, so I'm not really going to worry about the gold today. I'm just going to go black and white. But that's kind of the effect that I'm hoping to get today. Move them out of the way. So just using this uh, recycled canvas. I need something to just lift it up. Stay there, one sec. <laughs> um, where did I put it? Where did I put it? I think it's still in the laundry because I washed it. I'll just use this one. I just use a little plastic container just to pop it up like that on a bit of an incline. But um, let's just start layering paint. So as I said, just black and white today. The white is two parts artist loft flow when i got this from michael's it's a different label it's a blue label my old ones look like let me grab one of the old ones <clears throat> maybe you guys know if there's a difference or whether they've just changed labels i don't know so that was my old one and then that's the new one with just blue no orange or beige on it i don't know i don't know if there's a difference so two parts Artist Loft Flow Acrylic to one part Deco Art Satin Enamels. And then that is make, mixed equal parts with Floetrol. This is the Australian Floetrol. I think it's a little bit, uh, is it thicker or thinner? I can, never, I can never work out if it's thicker or thinner than the States one. But anyway, one equal parts. And then I used for my black equal parts of the Artist Loft Black with Floetrol. So I've got 100 grams of Floetrol, 100 grams of black. Uh, the white, I did 65 grams of white to 35 grams of satin enamel just to make up 100 grams and then 100 grams of Floetrol. So that's it. The white does feel a little bit thinner than the black because this is quite runny, but that's okay. We want the, we don't want the black to um, like mix in too much. I'd like them to be a little bit separate. So we'll just get started. Not sure how much to put in. I don't want my layers too small, I guess. Just putting in equal amounts. Black, white, black, white. And a nice stripy look. Never done this before. So I'm gonna do the waterfall pour. Well, you know, I did well the last one was a ring pour, the one I showed you on the round, that was a ring pour. And it had the gold in it, but no gold today. Might just leave that little bit of white behind, just in case I need to pop it on the corners. I want it to be nice and cloudy, but I don't want the white to take over too much. So we'll see what happens with equal amounts of black and white. Maybe it needs to be like 
two cups black to one cup white. We shall see what happens, hey? I do like experimenting and trying to come up with, you know, different ideas so we don't all get bored doing the same things. Right, now that's just going to sit up there like that. And I'm going to pour this way. Look at that. I've got my cup. <laughs> all right, I'm going to just do... Um, Probably do a bit of a jiggle pour because I like those defined fingerlings. If you just do a straight pour, you don't get them as thick. They're just like thinner fingerlings, but I like to have the thicker ones. So just support my hand under here. And off we go. Up and down, up and down. Keep the cup in the same spot. I'm getting you quite low to the canvas because I don't want it to mix too much. I think if you go up from really high, the weight of the paint dropping down will maybe mix it too much and you end up with a lot of grey. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Now slowing it down as the cup empties. Still do my little jiggles though. How's it looking? I'm looking at my jiggles, I'm not looking at the other end. I have to keep an eye on it though, make sure it doesn't go off the end before I'm finished here. Right, so that'll do, I'll just take that off there. Oh, look at that! That's pretty. You can take that away now. Uh, give it a bit of a torch. center and then my wings or fingerlings are more white. Uh, I think that's because I put black in my cup first. And I don't mind at all about getting these little white bubbles, little, little cells, that's fine. Uh, now I'm going to just I'll pop a little bit of water just in my white there to thin it out and then I can pop it on the edges. I want it to be a little bit thinner than this paint. If it's too thick, that paint won't be able to roll over. It'll kind of hit it and stop. So I want it to flow nicely. So it needs to be a little bit thinner. Look at my fingerlings. Aren't they cute? They're white, they're grey, they're black. So pretty. Might as well use all this up. Use my little tool here just to spread that. It's always a shame when you have to tilt these because it's tricky. You, you think, oh, do I tilt down? Do I tilt up? Do I go to the side? What do I do? It's always a bit tricky because you're going to lose your wings. But it needs to be done. Can't just leave all that paint on there, can we? Try and spread that a little bit. Don't want to leave a bit of a raised area there because the paint might not flow over it. There we go. Hopefully I'll go over the edges, otherwise I'll have to paint all my edges white. Okay. Oh my gosh, now what I tend to usually do <clears throat> is do the top first. So let's do that. Whether or not that's a good thing, I don't know, but let's do the top. Uh, we go over, doesn't matter. Back this way. So this is where you sort of lose your, your wing shape because you do have to, you know, tilt to cover everything. 
it's too much paint just to leave it there. Turn it around so you can see me tilting the other way. I'm just kind of rolling the paint. I need to get to the side there. So I'm taking the weight of the paint back to the middle so I can get to the side. You need to take the weight of the paint to where you want it to go. And as soon as you've gone over the side, you can come back again. Oh, look at that. Might leave these big ones down here they're quite interesting aren't they just bring everything back to the middle a little bit so there we go And I haven't over tilted, so my cells that have popped up in the middle have stayed relatively, you know, nicely shaped. I haven't over tilted them and made them go all sort of elongated. So there you go. What do you think? So it's not not a traditional wing wing pour, obviously, because you know you tilt. Um, I guess. Actually, I don't know. I don't know if you can do a traditional wing pour without tilting. Maybe, maybe you could, but you'd have to have very little paint on the canvas. Maybe that's something I can try, and actually not tilt and just leave it. I guess that could be something I could experiment with, uh, just to actually leave the top. You know, the the wings. As I pour them, just leave them. But uh, yeah, that would have to be something I would experiment with and see. The leave the the least amount of paint on the surface that I can, so that I don't have to tilt. Because if you leave really thick paint on you on your canvas, obviously it's not going to dry and it's going to crack. So you have to be careful, not leaving too much on there. This little end here needs some white, doesn't it? Is that it? I can't see. I have to go around. Oh, I think I got it. Just use my little tool here and clean up the, the bottom, catch all those drips. even a little bit thicker because it's your white that you want to have um, a bit on the thin side so that it creates those clouds uh, and then you could possibly have your black a little bit thicker it's just so that it stays more black uh, and doesn't blend so much possibly I mean you don't want to make your black too thick otherwise you won't get the reaction with the white but um, I think it's really pretty. I'll bring you down for a close-up. And it was really pretty when I just poured it, you know, when the waterfalls and the, the gorgeous wings and everything. But as I said, it just it can't stay like that. It's just too much paint. And it can't stay like that. I might give it another torch just to pop some bubbles and um, see if there's any more little effects that want to come up and say hi. There's those boulders in the middle there. <clears throat> Call it Boulder City, hey? <laughs> so because I did the jiggle pour, those fingerlings are quite thick on the ends there. They're not pointy. If you want a traditional ring, uh, wing pour, 
like an angel wing paw, you wouldn't do the, the jiggle. You would just do um, a straight paw and then these little fingerlings are more sort of pointy and that gives you those sort of wispy feather looks. Um, I'll try that next. Maybe I can see what happens if I do a wing paw. Maybe I'll do it on um, like a white background or a black background, paint the whole surface in that colour and then use just a little bit of paint as much as I have to but not too much and do a wing paw and not tilt it and see what happens. Just see how it dries. So that's a little experiment. I'll do that and then we can see what happens because I know everyone likes those gorgeous wings and it's such a shame to to tilt them sometimes but if you want to cover your whole canvas I mean, this is still really pretty. It's interesting. It's got lots of effects happening, just considering it's black and white. It's really interesting, isn't it? All right, I shall leave it there. I've got a few other things that I want to do. A couple more pours that I want to do today because it's Saturday and I get to paint. So uh, I'll be doing that. So I'll be having fun in my studio today, all alone. Who wants to come and pour with me? <laughs> Keep me company. Oh, dear. All right. I shall see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.